Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial in the multiplayer playlist where we're going to move on to creating a simple drop-in menu system so you can select the color of the character rather than just automatically spawning and possessing the player. So by the end of this we'll have something that looks a little bit like this. So at the moment we've replaced this with the different controllers now. We'll spawn in different selection windows and you can then just hit left or right to change the color of the character you'd like to possess and this can be done with any of the controllers so player one when i come in is blue two will be orange and three will be green and you can have any of the players sharing a color as well and of course the idea is that you could easily replicate this and change it from color swapping to just spawning in a completely unique type of player class completely up to you how you wanted to go with this i'm just using the color thing just because it's a kind of system that we already have going and the idea is to get the concepts across rather than making anyone's particular game in this playlist. Okay, so back over in the main project, the main things we're going to need here, inside of the Blueprints folder, I'll create a new folder named UI. This will just be where the widgets are being housed, and we need two widgets. So the first one is the main menu. This is just going to hold all of the different slots that can possibly drop in, and then the second one will be the character select widget, and you'll see why as we go through. So the first thing is to create a widget blueprint. So I'm going to call the first one WBP underscore menu. And what we want to do in here, inside of the designer, I'm just going to place a uniform grid panel. So we'll find one of those, drop that in, and I'll just completely center this to begin with. I'm going to make this a little bit taller and wider. So I'm going to set the X dimension to 1200 and the Y to 250. And what this will do is this will allow us to create every time a player presses start, we'll drop a new character select widget into this box. So there's going to be a kind of a system within a system here to allow us to get this working. But basically, as a quick example, what we could do is I'll find an image. If you're not familiar with this type of widget element, and every time we drop an image in here, if we were to give this a new row and column, it will update where this one is. So they both default to zero, zero. If we give one of them a new column, to zero one, it will space that across the uh, widget box. And it will do that for every different element that we give a different row or column. So very easy to use. And this will allow us to kind of play around with that drop in, drop out system so that it can position it where we need it to be when the different character selects come in. So over in the designer now, what we want to do is create a function which can be called whenever the player presses start. And this will allow us to create the next widget system that we want. So I'm just going to get this widget system ready actually so we can fill this in. We may not have time to do this one today, but that's fine. We'll create a new user widget, again, of the widget blueprint type, and I'll call this one WBP underscore character select. Okay, so purely placeholder, but what we'll do is we'll come in here and we will drag in a border for now. Remember, I just um, like to use borders as they allow us to place extra objects underneath these opposed to images, but this will give us a kind of idea how this will look uh, dimension wise at least when we start spawning things in and again i'm going to zero this out on the x and y put this at 0.5 so that it's perfectly central and that will give us an idea that this system is working when we're calling these in the menu widget so what we want here is a function i'm going to name this function add character select and this is basically going to take remember that uh, player index that we've been using pretty much all the way through the project so far. Uh, we'll be getting that when the player presses start. So we'll need this index in the menu here, and we're going to create a new widget system based on this. So we'll pull from here and say create widget. The widget will be of type WBP underscore character select. And one thing we could do actually is in the character select, we will come over to the graph, we'll create a new variable. We'll name this one player index. So we can keep track of that here as well and we will make this public, expose it on spawn and set it to type integer so that this is required when we create this. So then when we go back over here, we can refresh this and then we can just plug that in here so we know that we now have the player index hooked up. Next, we're gonna to want to add this to viewport. 
so we now have that spawned to the window again if you were going to do like a drop in drop out system or something you may want to promote this to a variable so that you can track all of the different widgets you're spawning uh, maybe make an array of these but for now this would be perfectly fine as we just want something to be spawned in so i'm going to add a reroute node to tidy this up a little bit and then we want to use the function this is for the uniform grid we want to use the add child to uniform grid we may need to untick context sensitivity here we've got the add child uniform grid option we can plug this in and of course we know the only uniform grid we have uh, is over here we will need to tick this to be a variable for us to grab this in the graph section just going to drop another reroute node here and then we can drag in the uniform grid so that will be the parent and we're adding this widget as a new child of this parent and very very simple here we're only concerned about the column so we're going to have so we're going to have them stacking uh, horizontally so we can use the player index i'm going to use the get player index call and plug that in just here to the column so that will kind of automatically now player zero should be on the left hand side always player four will always be at the right hand side and the final thing is if we add a return node so we'll just create a return node for our function we can hook this up and i think there's a good chance we'll need the widget type a little bit later so we can plug this into our return node and i'll just rename this by selecting it to character select okay so that is the entirety of the functionality inside of this class done this is just kind of housing the child widgets and mostly acting as a kind of visual representation we do of course want this to be spawned when someone presses play or in fact we're going to want this one to be spawned as soon as the game begins and then we're going to want to spawn the character selects when someone presses play so we're going to go to the game mode we'll need to override some stuff in our game mode setup the first thing is on the begin play after we have all of our start points and receivers we're going to create a new widget again this one will of course be the wbp underscore menu we're just kind of creating this it's invisible anyway so we're not going to know it's there until someone presses start so we can immediately promote this to a variable because of course we need a reference for this when we come back later and start adding the child elements to it we're going to name this one menu widget ref and then of course pull from here and add to viewport okay so that now exists and then we're going to want to change the logic inside of the spawn player function which was in the interface and what we want to do is we're going to have to we'll keep this for later of course we're going to need this again uh, but for the time being we don't want to immediately spawn the player we want to spawn a widget so in fact i'll leave this the same and we will create a new interface function it saves destroying the progress that we've already made there so back in the interface or the game mode so the bpi underscore game mode so what we'll do here is we'll make a copy of our spawn player just because it has the inputs and the outputs we already want i'll rename this one to display character select we can actually remove the input receiver we're probably not going to need to use that so we can just use the current player index and of course we need the return value so that we have a function that that we can work inside of then in the game mode we should now have our new function and we can implement this very quickly so what we want to do we're going to get our menu widget we want to add our new child element here so we're going to call that function we've already made so the add a character select the character that we're selecting is of course going to be the current player index it doesn't appear that the name has updated there which means that may cause us a, an issue in a moment so we'll go back and just make sure that we have compiled and saved this because if we start using that output pin and the name hasn't been compiled and updated it should say character select then that will probably cause us a bit of issue later but back in the game mode so what we'll do now is we're going to get our player start receiver array we want to find an element in here which is going to be the current player index so we'll find something at the point which will be the current player index here we can plug that in tidy things up and what we're going to want to do here is whilst keeping track of the input receivers and the current index so the widget screen that's been created we also want to know which one this relates to when that input receiver presses start so we're going to need to create another variable here uh, this is going to be the one topic where we're jumping around a little bit because we're kind of hacking things into an existing system but inside of the input receiver we just want to create a new variable we'll name this one character menu ref this will of course be of type character select uh, widget so the wbp underscore character select and we'll make this public so that we can access this and set it a little bit later 
So that should be all we need to do back in there. Back in the game mode now, we can set this variable. So we want to set the character select menu reference and that will be the one that we've just created. The reason for this is that we're going to bind this directly to some inputs in the input receiver because moving around a menu system inside of Unreal with a gamepad is its own problem, which would be worth its own playlist. We're gonna do this a way where we're going to directly drive the direction in which we're changing the color based on the left and right D-pad or left and right uh, arrow clicks on the keyboard for the each specific input receiver. Like I said, otherwise we would be spending another sort of five or six videos just getting gamepad ready menu systems working, which in itself is a little bit of a pain. So on that note, as this is kind of a setup video, what we'll do is we'll go back to the project settings as well, and we'll go to the input. Uh, what we want to do is we'll set this as uh, some new action mappings. So we're gonna have menu left and menu right. And basically you can set these up to any inputs that you want. I'm going to use uh, left and right arrow for the keyboard and D-pad left and D-pad right for the game pads. You can add any extras that you want for your game as well. So that should be simple enough. That is going to be the final thing that we'll be putting inside of the input receiver. So we'll say menu left and menu right. Because remember at the beginning of play, the input receivers are the only things, uh, well, receiving input. So this will allow us to very easily navigate these small character select windows that will be spawning. So we're not going to do anything here yet. This is going to take a little bit longer. What we will do whilst we're here is change how the start functionality works. So the way we can do this is if we drag in, control drag in the character menu reference, we first want to check whether or not this is valid. So whether this exists. This is obviously only going to exist if we have created this and set this in the game mode, which is the previous step. So if we have, then that means that we have already spawned in our menu, our character select reference menu, which means we have a valid color to choose from. We're gonna default this to a specific color. Otherwise that means the player's chosen the color they want to use. If we haven't, then we're gonna get the game mode. So we haven't spawned in the character menu widget yet. And we're gonna use that new interface function we've just created, which is the display character select. So this is gonna fill in the character select reference for us. We're gonna use the player index so that we're making sure that this is uh, syncing up and staying the same. And we can probably test this now. Uh, we should only be getting that white square. Again, this is gonna be another topic in itself to get all of this set up properly. But we should now be able to come in and if we press enter or something in this window, and if I connect my gamepads back up, we can now spawn in a square which will be the character select window for every different player. Now the next step in the next video is that we're gonna take this and as we press left and right on the D-pad, we'll be changing the color of this square to represent the choice which has been stored by that player. So that's the bit that this input receiver is doing. That's gonna be what we're driving off of this functionality here. And then once that's been done, that's going to allow us to reuse that existing logic, which is the spawn player logic, which will need to update a few extra features here. So we're going to probably remove this player index and we'll replace that with the chosen color, because remember that's what's driving the color select in the character. And this is where you can start changing things around. So if you want to change it to a different type of character, this is where you're gonna start tracking which character's been selected rather than which color's been selected. So it should all be very flexible. And like I said, this is also going to mean that because we're using this uh, kind of hard set widget system here, where we'll just pass a direct message to which direction's been pressed. At the moment, for the very least, we won't need to worry about gamepad and keyboard navigated menu systems as that is just a huge pain to get set up at working reliably at least. There's some very quick easy ways to set things up but it's they're generally not very flexible or reusable so we'll be avoiding that for now just to get the uh, the main bulk of the concept across at the very least. Okay so I'll leave that here for now. As always if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful please do leave a like and share the video around that really helps the channel to grow and is greatly appreciated. Whilst you're waiting for the next video do be sure to check the channel for a ton of other tutorial videos and playlists on the channel. As ever though thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.